This is Hank Kuhneman. If you're unfamiliar, he's a far-right evangelical prophet. He calls himself a prophet. He's been prophesying about his effectively God Emperor Donald Trump. Um, not my term. It's the far right's term. They call him God Emperor. Anyways, I wanted to listen to what Hank Kuhneman had to say here because it gets absolutely absurd. He's on this TV show called Flashpoint, and it's hosted by another pastor named Gene Bailey. It's this guy right here. This is Gene Bailey. They have a couple of other pastors on, too. I'm sorry, prophets, not pastors, prophets. It's hosted on Kenneth Copeland's uh, TV network, so let's give it a watch, see what they have to say for themselves, and while we do, we're going to play some Breath of the Wild 2. Should just be in the background, won't bother you too much if you've never played it before. This is part two. You don't have to watch the last one to understand what happens in this one. I'll give context if it's missing. What we're talking about being canceled, you need to get your shirt. Let people know you're not going to, you're not going to take it. So persecuted, these people. Wow, huh? Some of the richest people on planet Earth. I mean, this, this is Kenneth Copeland's network. These people are so privileged, born with platinum spoons in their mouths. But they're, the, they're so persecuted and mistreated. Jeez, people are so mean to them. You're not going to take it. You will not. You know, the gay people that they say should bur that will burn in hell and should die a, a brutal, ugly death. They persecute these people so badly. Jeez. Not be canceled. All right. So let's talk about what's happened. Uh, Dutch, uh, you weren't canceled, but yet some things happened to you today. Tell us what happened on uh, Give Him 15. Was this guy persecuted, too, by the gay people that he hopes burn in hell? Well, we, we released a post about praying for our dams and waterways, water supply in America, because there have been quite a few prophetic words, uh, dreams about that. that there when he says there have been a, quite a few prophetic words and dreams, he means that he had a dream about this stuff and claimed that it was given to him by God. Really? The terrorists are going to go after the the water supply the terrorists going to go after the water supply you mean like domestic terrorists that love donald trump like he's a god are going after our electrical substations like that kind of thing seriously that's happening right now in history i don't know if you know how like when you're watching this video or what i don't know but right now domestic terrorists trump supporters are attacking electrical substations taking down entire power grids to prevent drag queen story hour from happening or whatever. Like, my God, people. The waterways to cut off our ability to transport and, of course, uh, you know, drinking water and, and death and damage. If some of these uh, dams are destroyed like Hoover Dam, it would be catastrophic beyond belief. So we released a post just saying, let's pray for these waterways, just as we did when we painted the borders. Uh, we didn't name names. We didn't say it's coming we didn't scare people but but uh facebook decided they didn't they didn't want to they didn't want to post it they they said no we can't we can't let that be released we okay i i don't know what the context is here or whatever but <laughs> facebook said we can't let that be released because of course facebook is run by satan himself if i didn't believe that satan was real i suppose i might be able to agree with that assessment but you know mark zuckerberg being the robot that he is but uh, Facebook is run by Satan himself and is trying to prevent God's people from getting the message out. I, I don't even know what message they even said. What did they say? That the left is trying to destroy waterways or something? We need to, like, take imminent action with our guns? I have no idea why Facebook would remove something like that. But it's obviously not as simple as they're claiming right now. I'm sure I don't even need to point that out. We want people to feel safe, and so we, we don't want to— a post, I guess, about safety and people feeling safe. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> because I, I, I don't understand. But but it has started. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all, all we were doing was say, let's pray for safety. Right, and I guess that right. scares people when we pray for safety and say, hey, terrorism might happen. So let's not let it happen. OK, I don't I don't know what he's talking about here. I can't speak to what he's saying. But um, two things that I do know. One. Facebook does take down practically everything at the drop of a hat. Like it's it's a little bit absurd at this point. They'll they'll take down whatever. And two, these people are domestic terrorists and 
um, excuse and even promote domestic terrorism on a regular basis. So it could go either way. I don't know. But, you know, I, you know, when Lance mentioned that scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, 9, my heart leaped because I wrote about that today. I think the word is leapt, but okay. For tomorrow's post, that very verse, there are a great door of opportunity, but there are also many adversaries. And you'll right. be glad to know, I think you will, that I actually, tomorrow's post is taken from your book that you just uh, promoted. Oh my God, dude. Let me tell you something about books, okay? Something that I've discovered. It costs tens of thousands of dollars to publish one yourself. Um, it's extremely expensive, you know, line editing, copy editing, having a book cover designed and uh, having it formatted properly for PDF, having the audio book done. It's very, very expensive and time consuming. Oh my God. But selling only 100 copies will bring in, you know, $3,000, for example. So every copy sold is a lot of money. It's a big money type of situation that you deal with when you're dealing with books. And this guy just shouting out Gene Bailey's book once on this channel, this TV channel, with, I don't know, t tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of watchers. I have no idea how many they have will bring in thousands and thousands of dollars for Gene Bailey, without a doubt. Put it on your oh, show you. yeah. uh, uh, because I just felt to go in that direction. And I use that very verse of scripture. There are many, uh, there's much opposition, but we can't get distracted by the opposition. Right. We have to keep our focus on the opportunities. And that's what oh, Paul that's was good. saying there. Look, you know, and, and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to be detracted. We're going to be like Caleb. We don't care how big the giants are. We can take the land and we will. So we need to be ready for this because it's yeah. coming. We can take the land. You catch that? We can take the land. What he's saying is he wants to take the United States in the name of Christian nationalist Jesus. I mean, they're going to try to shut us down, turn us off, silence us. We're just not going to allow it. They're going to try to turn us off. No, we want them to be forced to sit in front of our TV channel and watch this. We're not going to allow them to turn us off. Uh, we're going to find a way and God's going to find a way. and We're going to get this done. Amen. Amen. We're going to get it done. For the record, I don't like God. This is absurd. I don't know the precise thing that he's referring to here, but I do know that QAnon believes that they're like when uh, the storm happens, their big apocalyptic event that's going to resolve all their problems, all the evil people be arrested and the children saved and blah, blah, blah. They think that there are going to be 10 days of Internet and power outages. That's going to signal that the storm is the storm is starting. And then they believe that all the arrests are going to happen and the TVs are going to be legally required to show eight hours of of political trials against the perpetrators eight hours on eight hours off for like two weeks straight until all of the you know people taking advantage of children are their trials are complete and they're sentenced to death seriously they're not going to be allowed to turn off their tvs i mean i i don't know if that's actually what he's talking about but he is a QAnoner, so we're gonna find a way and we're gonna get this done Amen. Amen. We're going to get it done. All right, Lance, I'll give you a chance to comment before I go to Hank. Now, we're going to don't forget the water mm -hmm. thing because we're going to come back to Dutch because there's a prophetic word. There's a there's a thread in here. We're going to come back to that. But I want to give Lance in the library a chance to talk. Go ahead, Lance. <laughs> He's saying that because he did a joke earlier about, you know, a, a, a clue joke. Lance in the library is just stupid. <laughs> no, I think that when, as we're transitioning into the discussion of the prophetic, the prophetic has taken a real beating yeah. uh, since uh, since the Trump uh, election. And I want everyone to understand something. This this time, the church may have been in the background praying and voting and laboring in the last election. This time, the church is on the front lines. That's good. And they are trying desperately to suppress Christian engagement. They've made a full court decision that they're going to go after Christian nationalism. God, these people are such martyrs. It's absurd. That's the Rob Reiner movies. That's going to be the...
The hit pieces are going to come out of Rolling Stone. They have a dedicated journalist watching this show in order to go after Who is they? Who has a dedicated journalist watching this show to go after God's people or whatever? I'm not a dedicated journalist. I mean, Right Wing Watch watches this show just like I do in the exact same way. They just turn it on and listen to the crazy stuff they're talking about here. They're not journalists. Right Wing Watch are um, a, a political activist group, effectively, determined to show people in the country the type of absolutely insane stuff that, that's happening right now. And the articles that they write are commentary articles, not um, journalism. I mean, it's okay. You don't have to be a journalist to be legitimate. I, I view Right Wing Watch as legitimate. I think I'm legitimate. It's just not news. It's political commentary. Everything we say, that tells me that the devil takes the church seriously That's right. because the church is the only variable yeah. that hell can't calculate on how it's going to impact things. I mean, he said... Journalists, uh, journalists, they have journalists dedicated to watching this show. That tells him that the devil fears him. Why? Because the people that watch this show to get clips, like, like we're doing right now, are Satanists or possessed by demons or otherwise mentally diseased. I hear this all the time from Jehovah's Witnesses. They're, they have this stuff through their Watchtower articles and everything, all through them. They, in fact... What they're saying right now, these people, is the exact reason why Jehovah's Witnesses were banned in Russia and labeled an extremist organization because of their treatment of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses or non-Jehovah's Witnesses because of their shunning policy. Norway right now is going through a big trial because they removed Jehovah's Witnesses tax exempt status as a religion. They, they were, actually, they removed their religious status. So they aren't allowed to marry people or anything. They're allowed to gather and do whatever they want. They just can't marry people. They aren't going to get special deductions or payments from the government like other religions do. And um, Jehovah's Witnesses are going through this whole big trial right now to try to get their religious status restored so they can get money from the government. When it benefits them, they can engage in political activities. Isn't that interesting? Anyways, uh, what they're saying here on Flashpoint right now is the exact thing that got Jehovah's Witnesses banned in a number of countries. And are these people being, you know, um, banned or removed as religion? Are these people losing their tax exempt status or any of that? Of course not, because they have a majority control in government as a religious um, voting block, effectively. If Jehovah's Witnesses were encouraged to vote the way that these people are, they would be a formidable voting block as well. This is the year the church shows up. Wow, I love that. I love it. You're right. The devil takes the church seriously. These people are psychotic, man. All right. Let's get into this. Now, I want you to pay close attention as I go to Pastor Hank here, because this is what happened. This uh, this particular prophetic word was back September 14th. When he says prophetic word, he means Hank Kuhneman or Lance Wallner, who we were just listening to, or a variety of others that are on this TV show. They claimed that God was speaking to them and gave them a secret message that only they could receive as you know one of God's special anointed chosen people or whatever. And they use those prophetic words, quote unquote, as the same as the Bible. They view it as the same as the Bible. They quote their own prophetic words like their Bible verses. Really, I'm not even joking. In fact, they have an entire record of all of their prophetic words. Yeah, I, I still have it up. I talked about it in the last part. This is part two. You don't have to watch the last one to understand what happens in this one. I'll give context if it's missing. I mean, just an example here. Prophecy, the governmental year of the courts of heaven. Key events and areas to pay attention to in 2024. Estonia, Iran, the Vatican, or the Pope. A chief justice in the Supreme Court. Media networks. Dark clouds in the headlines. Royal family or the UK. Unsealings. What does unsealings mean? 
all of these things are so vague that literally every single year in human history or in uh, American history, these things have been discussed in the news cycle at some point. Estonia might be a little bit less direct and specific, but this is honestly an extremely vague list. How can they, with a straight face, say any of this stuff? Sad part is that people really believe them. Um, right there at Open the Heavens, and there was a certain word that came. So let's overlay where we are right now. 47 states uh, this weekend went through an amazing freeze. You know, Texas is, uh, you know, we're in the single digits with the uh, wind chill in the negative digits, uh, which, you know, we don't do that well. Uh, but Pastor Hank, even last week, you guys were up there and you couldn't come on the show because of the uh, you couldn't get yeah. out because of the blizzard condition. OK, now what they're about to talk about, I watched like five minutes into this, so I, I remember what they say here. What they're about to talk about is a prophecy involving cold. Hank Kuhneman, ba I think it was Hank Kuhneman, somebody, one of these supposed prophets, basically said there's going to be a, a cold snap. We're going to see cold in the world. Really? You're going to see cold in the world? That's your prophecy? That's not even a prophecy. We, like, we don't see cold every year. So walk us through... Real slowly, Pastor Hank, because I want people to really get this, what okay. that word was, and then we'll dive into what happened with uh, Dutch. Go ahead. Oh, and, and these prophecies, thank you, uh, Pastor Gene, these prophecies are out at hankandbrenda.org. You can also go out to... Yeah, I guess it was Hank's. That's what we were just looking at, by the way, hankandbrenda.org. OneVoiceTV.net, uh, where we have prophetic perspectives, where we've done actually breaking down the prophecies. So very quickly, you mentioned the prophetic. First and foremost, you have to understand that the prophetic, Elijah, Samuel, even Nathan the prophet, were commissioned by God in a time when the kingdom was under certain derision or there were certain uh, opponents coming against the kingdom. God always had the prophetic there to help speak to the nation, to the people, but also to the leaders to help bring them to a place of understanding of what God's agenda was. The other thing you see is in 1 Kings 18, verse 41, you see weather being used as an example of something that signifies a shift or a change. It's I mean, you're catching this, right? Weather will signify a shift or a change. When I uh, prophesied that there would be a weather event, it would be cold. That means that God is changing. When it gets cold, it means that God's changing the government for the better, and he's going to fix everything, put it all right, and put Trump back in office, and blah, blah, blah. These people are ridiculous. It's 1 Kings 18, 41. The prophet Elijah says, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. It had been three and a half years of famine, a harsh season. There was no prophetic evidence, physical evidence of what the prophet heard. But he heard changes coming. This is... It's funny. He says, I hear uh, an abundance of rain or whatever it is. You know, that sounds familiar. I think I've heard that before. You guys remember this video? Strike and 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 strike until you have victory for every enemy that is aligned against you. Let there be that we would strike the ground for you will give us victory, God. I hear a sound of abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. Sound familiar? I hear a sound of shouting and singing. I hear a sound of victory. The Lord says it is done. God, this is just off. I'm sorry. I apologize for that, guys. I shouldn't have done that. It's my mistake. I won't do it again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know I'm going to do it again. This is what these weather prophecies are signaling by God with the freeze, the snow, uh, the heavy wet snow that we just saw. God said that on September 14th of this year as well, is it signifies changes in the air. Why is that important? First Kings 18, go to verse 45. It says, then it happened. In other words, what the prophet heard, it took time for the servant to actually see the manifestation. Okay, um, he's talking about like Second Kings, I think, right? And he's he's using Second Kings as a pretext to convince people that he knows what he's talking about, to convince people that his prophecy about cold weather is real. 
I see Jehovah's Witnesses do this stuff all the time, and it's an absolute joke to me. Jehovah's Witnesses, I, I'm not even being hyperbolic or joking here. They found a verse in Daniel that, that says 2,300 mornings and evenings. What's the context behind that? It's completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter what the context is because they don't care what the context is. It's completely unrelated to their prophecy entirely. But they saw the words 2300 mornings and evenings, and they use this bizarre pseudo biblical um, what principle called the day year principle. They use that to conclude that 2300 mornings and evenings actually mean 2300 years and then they pick some random day in there like um the day that solomon's temple was rebuilt for example they use the the day that it was ordered to be rebuilt which by the way they got incorrect and they add 2300 years to it and blah, middle 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 they end up with this date of like 1874 or 1914 or 1925 or just like th I'm telling you this has happened like a thousand times this is Jehovah's Witnesses strategy and the Millerites the Adventists in general they come up with these absolutely ridiculous um, prophecies based on complete nonsense and that's what this sounds like it sounds like he picked a, a verse at random in the Bible that had a number in it, and he took that number and he added that number to another number. And now we have some special prophecy that applies to today instead of a prophecy that was intended to apply to their day or something that's not even a prophecy in the first place. These people are insane. Get help. Uh, the heavy wet snow that we just saw, God said that on September 14th of this year as well, is it signifies changes in the air. Why is that important? First Kings 18, go to verse 45. You see what I'm saying, right? He's claiming to have received some special prophecy from God, and he's using random Bible verses to make claims that, that seemingly back up the idea that he really is hearing like all this stuff from God. It's a joke. Five, it says, then it happened. In other words, what the prophet heard, it took time for the servant to actually see the manifestation. That's been the problem since 2020. Prophets were hearing things, others were echoing it, they never heard it. And, and others said, well, wait a minute, it didn't look like it was happening. And so uh, they discounted the prophetic or they- It didn't happen. The prophecy was Donald Trump is going to win the 2020 election. And when Hank Kuhneman's prophecy failed miserably, he had to back off of that and make some other ridiculous claims about it. They uh, labeled certain ones as false or whatever. And, and yet we yeah, have he's to a stay. He's a false prophet. Are you kidding me? He leaned into this thing called the flop flip prophecy. Because God, you know, operates with American idioms in mind. The flop flip prophecy was this idea that um, the evil Democrats' plans are going to flop, and then uh, people who worked for the Democrats against our God Emperor Trump are going to flip on the Democrats. Just, I don't even know what to do with this. It, it is so stupid. I don't even know what to do with it. Uh, labeled certain ones as false or whatever. Yeah, you're false, Hank. You're a false prophet. And, and yet we have to stay with it because the prophets were hearing the people, the servants, had to wait and help pray it through, like you see in 1 Kings 18. Seven times he prayed, and then finally it happened. And that's what verse 45 says. It happened. Now watch, though. When it happened, the Bible says the clouds or the sky was filled with darkness. That's the problem. People get their so he found a prophecy in the Old Testament from 2 Kings. I'm assuming it's a prophecy. Like, I haven't even read that verse, so I'm not sure what he's specifically referencing right now. But he found a prophecy in the book of Kings, and now he's applying it to his modern-day interpretation. Apparently, God had something else in mind that was going to happen 
you know, um, 4,500 years or, I don't know, 3,500 years after this was set, after this was supposed to have taken place. This is such a joke. Eyes on the darkness, but something was happening at the same time. The fulfillment of that prophetic word. It says, and there was great rain. In other words, the prophecy was fulfilled. Lastly, you see verse 46. Elijah, the prophet, outruns the chariot of Ahab. Eventually, the prophetic outran the political, and the political caught up to what Elijah had prophesied. Now, let's go to September 14th. September 15th, God prophesied, and he said, and I just want to just read a quick thing real fast. He said, do you think that somehow I've ignored the injustice, the corruption, the evil, the things that have been deep stated and seated? No, been deep stated and seated. Did the Bible really say that? Which translation is he using? He's trying to claim that the Bible used the term deep state. This is a joke. God says, I've watched, I've waited, for this is my time now in the earth, and it's my seasons, and the seasons will blend together. And then they will say, what is this frigid cold? It is so cold, and why does it snow? And then God says, it'll be... By the way, I hear you asking, what is he reading from? Which verse? I believe he's reading from his own prophecy right now. Not the Bible, his own prophecy. Jehovah's Witnesses do the exact same thing. They quote the watchtower instead of quoting the Bible as evidence of this or that or whatever. I'm not even joking. I was doing research for my book about two weeks ago. By the way, if you want to check out the book, I don't know if it's released yet or not, but it comes out, or I'm sorry, but if you want to see, um, check out owenmorgan.com slash book. Anyways, I was researching for my book about the cross and the stake because Jehovah's Witnesses, of course, believe that it was a torture stake that uh, Jesus died on, not a torture cross. So I'm like, well, is this correct or not? Well, the answer is Jesus would have died on a cross. It would have been a cross, not a stake. Jehovah's Witnesses point out that the word used in the Bible to describe it was storos, which means a pull in the ground, basically, which obviously can also apply to a cross. But the literalists that they are, I guess they chose to claim that, you know, the Bible said pull instead of cross. But either way, I went into it, did a deep dive to see, like, where that's translated that way. Jehovah's Witnesses use their translation of the Bible as the basis for the idea that the Bible says it's storos instead of... Um, Instead of like cross, it's a pull instead of a cross. They are quoting their own writings and literature as evidence of what they believe. How can like, God, it's just, it blows me away that these people are asked for a source to prove what they're claiming and they use themselves as a source. Really? People, this is insane. Heavy, heavy, wet snow. And why in a place where we escape the frigid cold, we are freezing? God says it is to show that I am the God of times and seasons, and for a while it will seem backwards, and I am showing the earth that I am the one who is bringing my purpose at this time. Now, you got to go back. Why does God use snow? Very quickly. Psalm 60, uh, what is it? Psalm 68, verse Again, he wasn't, uh, to my knowledge, unless I missed something, he was not quoting the Bible just now. He was quoting the words that he said. He's quoting himself as evidence that God believes this or whatever. You know, let me just verify that. Let's see, 4712. Let me just step back a few seconds. Hang on. Here, listen again to what he said leading up to that. Caught up to what Elijah had prophesied. Now, let's go to September 14th. September 15th, God prophesied. Catch that? September 15th, God prophesied. I And Hank Kuhneman recorded it because Hank Kuhneman was receiving this prophecy from God. This dude's a joke. 
60, uh, what is it? Psalm 68, verse 14. It references that God dealt with wicked kings. He dealt with political entities, spiritual entities, when it was snowing in Zaman. And it was a sign of God coming now to bring justice, but also a sign that the Lord was intervening to shake things. And snow was a sign in the natural. I don't know what he's talking about. I Let me look that up. What did he say? Now, you got to go back. Why does God use snow? Very quickly. Psalm 60, uh, what is it? Psalm 68, verse 14. Psalm 68, 14. Let's see. Psalm 68, 14. Oops, 13. I meant to hit 14. Let me just look this up. Hang on. When the Almighty scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow fallen on Mount Zalman. Mount Bash, Bashan, this is 15, Majestic Mountain, Mount Bashan, Rugged Mountain, why gaze in envy, you rugged mountain, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever. Okay, so it's describing an army or a, a set of kings that are loyal to God scattered around like snow. That's not saying that it did snow or that there would be cold or whatever. It's just saying it's referencing what it would look like or how widespread they were. You know, what? I should be looking at the NRSVA, Psalm 68, 14, because the NRSVA is really the most accurate. Oh, so this is a this is like a song. It's a poem that was written. So there's a lot of um, symbolism and analogy and stuff like that. When the Almighty scattered kings there, snow fell on Zalman is apparently a more accurate translation. Okay, interesting. It references that God dealt with wicked kings. He dealt with political entities, spiritual entities, when it was snowing in Zaman. And it was a sign of God coming now to bring justice, but also a sign that the Lord was intervening to shake things. And snow was a sign in the natural, just like the abundance of rain, that things were shifting towards the direction of what we've been praying, but what God desires to do. And uh, so I don't know if there's anything else, yeah, Pastor Gene, I, that you right. want so, me to share. So let me, let me take this from that uh, number 25, guys. I don't even know what he was talking about. What, how does like cold weather link to that verse? Okay, it says that it, snow is falling. What does that have to do with anything? Dude claims that it was snowy outside and that or it's cold outside and that's evidence that like whatever is happening like he he was right about all of it all along because it's snowy outside this guy is a joke uh, the uh right down there in red but god says i'll bring a rain that shall come and begin to be watered upon this nation again all right so we've got water the heavy snow the light what uh, before I go to Dutch, Pastor Hank, what does this say to you then? You know, bring it, bring it to a, a head for me. Does this, okay. it's supposed, what does this yes. say? What should we take from this? Not, uh, uh, back okay. in September, you prophesied it. That's one thing, but that happened. What is it that we need to take from that? Two things. Number one is it's signifying God's agenda. Again, God's heart must be heard. That's what prophecy is about. He's saying, look, I've seen the harsh season, just like the famine in the days of Elijah. Three and a half years. Man, it's almost been three and a half years. He's saying, look at the freeze. Look at what I will do. Even in that prophecy from September, he said, I'll freeze it in Atlanta. Again, God didn't say any of this. Hank Kuhneman said this stuff. This is a joke. And I'll freeze their efforts against 45. Do you know that God chose October 31st, Reformation Day, to send a freeze to Atlanta? And that's what that prophecy right. said. So no, he didn't. God didn't choose any of this stuff. What are you even talking about? So number one, it signifies change. It signifies God's hearing. It signifies things are about to shift in the direction of what we prayed. Second, it signifies that we need to pray because there is a warning there. And the warning is this. Wait, we're supposed to pray? Why would we have to pray for God to do what he said he was going to do? If he says he's going to do it, then why does he just do it? that the enemy also wants to counter. In the one prophecy, Pastor Gene, from September of this year, God said, watch the water. Dutch has a dream. He has an announcement. He gets censored. He gets canceled. Why the water? Well, God... Censored and canceled. Really? You think you guys are being censored and canceled? 
as an announcement. He gets censored. He gets canceled. Why the water? Well, God said in September 18th of 2021, they're going to go after our waterways. So the reason we have to do this is I'm going to give you one last scripture very quickly. Acts 12. James, the apostle, was beheaded at the hands of a political figure. And then the church sees Peter, one of their primary figures. Dude, why is it? Is this game like loading or what? what? What is happening right now? That took like a really long time. That was weird. And then the church sees Peter, one of their primary figures, uh, get thrown in jail. Obvious outcome would probably be he's going to be beheaded. And the church did something. They prayed without ceasing. Their prayers shifted to a whole nother realm. And they did it constantly. A whole nother. A whole nother. Okay, well, why did they have to pray for Peter? Wasn't this God's intent? Didn't Jesus die and go to heaven? And I think Hank believes in the Trinity. Didn't Jesus, a.k.a. God, see what was happening to his buddy Peter, who he tasked with seeding new churches and spreading the word? Why would God or why would Jesus require prayer when he could just as easily, when he's omniscient and omnipotent, he could just make it happen? This makes no sense. They didn't just let things happen like a 2020 election being stolen. They finally got in their prayer. Yeah, because, you know, Donald Trump totally just let the 2020 election be stolen. He's just that kind of guy. Let things happen like a 2020 election being stolen. They finally got in their prayer closets in Acts 12 and they prayed and said, no, you did it to James. You did it in 2020, but you're not doing it to President Trump. You're not doing it to this country now. We're going to keep praying. And you know what? Keep reading Acts 12. A political figure, an angel was sent as a result of their prayers. Do you think that Hank Kuneman knows that the election was not stolen? It was beyond a shadow of a doubt and unequivocally not stolen there it was the most secure election in american history it was absolutely above board do you think he knows that or do you think that he's a true believer that it really was stolen from him i'm on the fence like i cannot decide yeah hard to tell tell me what you think about it in the comments is he a true believer or not and Herod was removed by the angel and God got involved in politics. And that's what these prophecies are trying to signal. Change, number one, number two, church, pray. Things are shifting. And when we do, God will involve himself with politics and that which needs to be removed will and that which needs to be brought forth shall happen. And these things are a sign, even in Iowa, a freeze. And yet there's a triumphant victory of mm -hmm. one right. 45, the wrecking ball. Yeah. All right. So so the point I want you, everybody to get from what Pastor Hank just said is that you have a part to do. We have a responsibility. Uh, it's really easy to sit back and just judge a prophetic word because you what you think. Uh, no, you've got, a, you've got skin in this game, so you need to have it. All right. I don't want to take you more time. So there's their justification, I guess, for getting people as extreme as humanly possible and getting them involved in politics. Absolutely insane. I want to go to Dutch. Dutch, tell us the dream and then what happened after that with this prophetic word. Oh, yeah. Dutch Sheets claims to have had a prophetic dream. Okay. You know, I'll start by saying how exciting it is, Gene, to, to because the church for so long, we, we, were, we were having to react, react, react. But watchmen are supposed to be watching for the enemy and know when he's coming, what he's doing. And it's encouraging to me. That oh, I love it. So it's obvious to everybody, blatantly obvious, that this guy is simply reacting to the things that happen in the news. Like there are there's drag queen story hour and this guy just starts throwing a fit about it and saying wokeism has gone too far. But not until that's the news cycle does he start talking about drag queen story hour or whatever or that it's gone too far. It's interesting that that's when he starts talking about it when he claims to be prophetic. He claims to have special insight into political goings on that other people don't have. Huh. So he says. We should be seeing ahead. We should have the gift of foresight. Yeah, you should. Weird, huh? That the prophetic has reached a level where we're, we're hearing these things, these warnings uh, in, in advance. 
And this particular one was actually given in late November, this dream. But when it was sent to me, actually by the same lady who had the dream about painting the borders and, and anchoring the nation, Gina Goldston. Uh, okay, so some random woman had a prophetic dream and told him that there was something about the border? or Is that what he said? The dream about painting the borders and, and anchoring the nation. Painting the borders, anchoring the nation. What does that mean? I'm I'm actually kind of concerned by what that means. Painting the borders? Like, does he mean like painting the borders in blood? Or I don't know. Gina Goldston. But, you know, always take these dreams, pray over them, consult with other people, ask the Lord for his timing, etc. And I sat on this for several weeks. But then I begin to feel this urgency. Now is the time to release this. And I found out since that, several prophets, as Hank was talking about, several have had warnings about the water, the dams, the waterways, etc. But in this particular dream, 50 people found themselves in a military strategy room. They had been summoned there. One In his dream, 50 people summoned to a military strategy room, okay? ...themselves in a military strategy room. They had been summoned there, one from each state, and Gina in the dream was one of them. I was one of them. Gina and Dutch Sheet. So the military calls Christian nationalist nutcases in to help them with military strategy because they have the gift of foresight. I don't know how it could possibly be more like a cosplay, like LARPing. He is convinced that he is somebody special that's going to be used by the military because he has special insight. This is just insane and embarrassing. And we all gathered, and then a general and an admiral came into the room and said, we have asked you to... Wait, a general and an admiral. Okay. A general is over the army, and an admiral is over the navy, I believe, right? And a general and an admiral came into the room and said, we have asked you to come because we need your help. There was a, there was a map of all 50 states uh, on, the wall, the, on all the walls, uh, and the dams and waterways were highlighted. And they said, we need your help because there are some things that we just don't have any control over, and you're going to have to help us do that. And they said, we need you to pray for the waterways and dams. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not foresight. They knew what was happening. They are. Just, I guess the military is going to be incapable of stopping whatever is happening against the dams and waterways. OK. Dams, And then they said two specific things we need for you to pray regarding the dams. And they said, first of all, pray diligently against domestic and foreign terrorist attacks. And then secondly, they said, pray diligently against any attempt to intentionally restrict the water flow in an effort to restrict and hinder the supply lines in America. So there are other reasons they're going to attack these dams and waterways. But and this was somewhat interesting to me, it said, but one of the primary reasons is they want to restrict supply lines. Wow. So he's thinking about uh, military strategy because the military is going to come in and ask him to pray for this or that. And of course, he's just going to do it. Right. He's not even going to ask questions when the military calls him to uh, do something for them. He's just going to take action. This is I don't know how else to put this is LARPing. This is pretending that you're something. I mean, LARPing is fun, but these people aren't just LARPing They're They believe they're living it. This is a step past LARPing. Reasons is they want to restrict supply lines, things that are moved from here to there by way of water. So that would also include ports. And so so he's going to be asked to pray for the support. I'm sorry, for the ports, for the supply lines and stuff like that. Well, it's interesting because he was effectively praying that the supply lines would collapse during covid to force a new government, basically. And now apparently he's praying for well, now apparently the, the military just asks him to do something and he just jumps and does it. And that thing that he was asking or the thing that they were asking of him was to maintain supply lines. OK, uh, this warning came very, very strong in the dream. Then we sat down as representatives, wrote out prayers and decrees 
And then we were sent back to our states. And the next part of the dream, there were strategy rooms in all of the states. Each state had a, a strategy room, had a map up of the state with all the dams. And okay, well, what I find interesting about this is that what he's describing is something that exists now, which is to say there's like a, a political infrastructure that exists in each state, right? There are strategy rooms and things like that in each state, except the strategy rooms are really used by politicians. What he's saying is, in, in this dream, which is like a prophetic, like best case scenario, oh my God, God is using me kind of deal. Let's push for this thing to happen. He's saying that in his prophetic dream, he lives in a military state. And in this dream, he effectively controls what the military does. They're listening to him because he's somebody special. And I guess, like, uh, the people that he doesn't like are no longer involved at all. It's a one-party uh, government. Am I reading this correctly? It seems like that to me. Get help. And don't let this dude any closer to politics or any closer to political power than he already is. Jesus, people listen to this guy, seriously. I mean, he's met Trump. He knows Trump. He's prayed to, or I'm sorry, he's prayed with him and all that other junk, I believe. If he, if this guy specifically hasn't prayed with Trump, the other guy that's on here is talking just a minute ago, has. Like 10 times. He's been in rooms with Trump and prayed over him as a representative of the evangelical voting bloc. These people are very close to political power, really. If it was really possible to use prayer to do whatever you want to accomplish your ends in one way or another, the military absolutely would have weaponized it by now. That in itself should be enough evidence that magic and prayer are not doing anything for anybody. If they were reliable or trustworthy or if there was a higher chance than random even that they would bring about what you wanted when praying or doing magic or whatever, it would have been normalized and integrated right into science. It wouldn't be um, pseudoscience or metaphysical or whatever. It would just be science. State with all the dams and all the waterways and people were coming in and there was great strategy and they were all sent to specific places to pray for God's protection, taking the prayers and decrees that uh, that we had written for them uh, and all the. Wow. God needs you to say very specific words in specific ways and in, in certain. Um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? in certain uh, tones and all that stuff, in, in a specific order. You can't just pray for God to do this or that. It has to be an organized effort with very specific words that are being used. Or God won't do it. This is a joke, really. These people are as absurd as it gets. The nation, people in every state were making these same decrees, so there was this unified agreement all throughout the nation then they were all encouraged to also pray as they were led. Well, we released this today. People can look at today's post and see this, and they can also find these prayers and decrees that we have written. Uh, so he's describing a scenario in the not-too-distant future, any minute now. It's like an apocalyptic future where the military now controls everything, and the president is at a loss or doesn't exist at all. Or, or I suppose it's possible that the president is, like, directing the military to get information from these nutcases. God, these people live in another reality, man. It's just crazy. Uh, by going to DutchSheets.org or GiveHim15.com, they are posted there. So we're going to see the nation covered and protected. And uh, we're, Amen. you know, the, I don't know why we, this, the, 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 someone didn't want to release this today. I think they backed off. But all we were doing was saying, pray. Oh, because this is the one that got removed from Facebook. All we're doing is saying we need to pray. I don't know the context. I don't know if, you know, it was genuinely absolutely psychotic or what. But um, 
you know, something tells me that he's not representing the situation honestly here. This today, I think they've backed off. But all we were doing was saying, pray that this doesn't happen. Amen. So. That's good. Good. All right, Lance. Uh, I got like a minute and a half. <laughs> so it's always give Lance the impossible and do it in a minute and a half. Uh, you know, you heard these both these men. You know, the prophetic word and the dream. How? Do, what do you get from that? How tie it all together for us? Hmm. Well, I believe that the thing that I'm loving is, and it happens here in the program. When God brings together His brethren in the brethren in unity and humility. There's an increase in the collective ear to hear. You These people are brethren in humility. Is that what he just said? Humility, that means they're humble. Is this guy unironically claiming that everybody on this show is, is brought together because they're all humble? <laughs> Come on, man. At least make your lies convincing or believable. It used to be that... You know, by the way, this is the guy that that has prayed with Trump like on a number of occasions, multiple, like 10 or something. He knows Trump personally. These people are very close to political power, too close. Prophets might compete to see who could get the word. There's something apostolically maturing, I think, in the leadership of the body where we're really wanting to win as a team as uh, uh, more so than individually. And this time, because we're coming together as one, is a force multiplying anointing, which means the confirmation of many voices is going to help us have even more accuracy. When I was up at January 6, I was upset when it happened because I could see that Trump didn't have the voices that needed to be there speaking in proximity to him. That will not happen this time. So he's saying he was sad because he knew that Trump didn't have evangelicals in his proximity? What's he talking about? Of course he did. Greg Locke was there. He's an evangelical, right? Lance Walnaut was there. Uh, Josh Feuerstein was there. A whole bunch of people considered to be evangelicals were there. Trump wanted evangelicals represented at his January 6th speeches. And Locke even continued on to, like, the Capitol to... Um, you know, hold a bullhorn screaming Jesus nonsense out of it. I'm seeing a repositioning in a sense of how God's moving things around. We are occupying a whole different seat than we ever had before. I read The Economist and Dutch sheets. I read in the Dutch being criticized in The Economist of all things. I don't even know that that's true. Like these people lie for a living, but okay. Our names are actually now in the spirit realm showing up on dossiers because the devil knows we're moving forward dossiers like he's i don't know like a target of satan's political ire or whatever like what um for the record what he said here um the economist i, I don't know if like the economist is a political magazine or what but lance walnut has an idea for world domination. Um, and it's not just Lance Walnas. He talks about it a lot, but it's shared by all of these people. And the idea goes like this. It's actually the exact idea laid out to take control of the world by the Jews in that old Jewish propaganda um, book called Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It's the idea that these people want to control seven areas of society they want to control the church um, government economy military blah 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 i don't even remember what they all are there are seven of them if they can get people to the tops of those areas of society then they will be able to control society and force impose their will on it basically and it doesn't matter if people are atheist anymore they will be forced to go to church and when that happens, they will eventually give in to God. That's the idea. So the economist, when he says that, it, it seems like a joke. Like, oh, that's funny. The economist of all people are attacking this guy. That's the plan. That's what he's shooting for. He wants to be in a scenario where one of the seven mountains is attacking them because they're trying to integrate themselves into it, basically. Amen. I hope you everyone's watching at home. 
That should be encouraging. It ought to light you up, man. This is what we're seeing. God is on the move. Listen, we got We have our part to play. We need to pray these things through. We need to stay engaged. We need to understand what's happening. Uh, all right, so what we're going to do, I'm calling an audible right here, so Jason will make sure this happens. We're going to take this piece of what you had of both of those uh, of, of Lance and what Hank said and what uh, Dutch said, and we're going to pull that clip and we'll post it out to Rumble so that you can take that and share that. So you need to listen to that again because they went fast because of time. So you need to listen to that again. And so it was a prophetic message that he wants to share with the world because this is what's going to happen. And God is giving messages to his remnant church. This is psychotic. Absolutely psychotic. Listen to it again and then share it with all your friends and your people that understand. And they want to understand this whole thing about the prophetic. This is what we have to lean into. We're not shying away. We're going strong. We're leaving it all on the field. Uh, insert whatever phrase you want to do. But we're not giving up and we're not backing down. Why? Because we're here to rescue America. Thanks to Lance, of course, Mike Garofalo for bringing us the news, uh, Pastor Hank and Dutch Sheets. Thank you guys for being with us. Join us in Colorado Springs, actually, just north of there, Woodland Park, uh, Karis Bible College. Anyway, that's the end. Wow. Get help, people. This is psychotic. And the most psychotic part of it is that they have real political power. This is a religious organization, a nonprofit. They are legally required not to endorse a political candidate or they lose their status as a nonprofit. Does that matter? Of course not. They'll say or do whatever they want because no one is being um, investigated for this. Absolutely insane. Well, let me know what you think about it in the comments. This is just crazy, man. Absolutely crazy.